Welcome everyone to the newly renovated Capri Theater. I am State Senator Bobby Joe Champion and I proudly represent North Minneapolis and I'm excited to be here today for a celebration of black music. When I was a young boy growing up in North Minneapolis, I used to come to the Capri Theater to watch movies. So I am beaming with pride and excitement to be here. So it certainly brings back memories for me. But today, I'm here as director of the inaugural celebration of black music, sponsored by Anderson Corporation. Music, music is the universal language because it unites us. It brings us together and is the window to our souls. And speaking of soul, my musical soulmate is with us tonight. Please welcome our executive producer, Sharon Smith Akinsanya, CEO of the Ray McKenzie Group and the founder of People of Color Careers. Thank you so much, Senator Champion, for always being available to us, available to our community to uplift and support us. So glad that you're my friend because you truly are a treasure. You know, in my work every day as a diversity, equity, and inclusion marketing expert, it's so refreshing to partner with a client like Anderson Corporation. They understand the impact it has in the black community when they select a venue that is as meaningful and symbolic to the community as the historic Capri Theater. It's so exciting to live in Minneapolis, to be here where we have the cream of the crop of local talent to help us create an uplifting program that brings us all together to celebrate Black Music Month because music is the window to our souls. Please help me welcome to the stage, Karen Richard, Senior Vice President and Chief Human Resources Officer for Anderson Corporation. Thank you, Sharon. It is our honor to work with you every day on our diversity, equity, and inclusion journey. And thank you, Senator Champion, for being such a champion in our community and a friend of all of us at Anderson. Throughout history, music has always been something that brings us together. It truly is the universal language. And here at Anderson Corporation, all together is the mantra that we live by every day. We are so excited to be here in North Minneapolis at the historic Capri Theater to celebrate Black Music Month. Anderson is proud to be part of this inaugural celebration of black music because music is the window to our souls. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Karen, and all of the people at Anderson Corporation for making this all possible. Hello, everyone. My name is Niles, your host for this amazing program at the historic Capri Theater. With June being Black Music Month, we have come together to pay homage to the greatness of black music's contribution to the whole world. All throughout history, black music has had an amazing influence on culture as a whole, from fashion, television, the way people talk, flavor. We are so influential in every corner of the world. Our music has empowered society with strong messages of uplift and of course made you dance and groove your stresses away. Different music movements from the Harlem Renaissance to the bebop era to the soul music uprise of the 60s and so on were all powerful artistic moments in time created by black artists. Throughout the pains and struggles that were put in our paths, the music gave us joy, the music gave us hope, the music gave us inspiration that added to our resilience, educated us, and guided us to the light to this very day. Tonight, within this show, we'll be celebrating three black musical icons, the legendary Marvin Gaye, the incredible Billie Holiday, and the one and only Miss Aretha Franklin performed by our great Twin Cities artist, Lawrence Miles with Cadence Nunn, Thomasina Petrus, the Hearst Family Experience, Jamesia Bennett, and our house band under the musical direction of Darnell Davis. So for this hour, enjoy the sounds of black music, soul music, our music, because music is the window to our souls. 
one of the most musically creative minds ever. Marvin Gaye took emotions that were raw and painful and transformed them into songs that were so special. He is quoted saying, my music is full of drama and life. He mastered the craft of gravitating you towards his music by speaking on topics that you could closely relate to. Like many singers in black music, he started singing in the church. As he got older, he joined several rhythm and blues and doo-wop groups. He would dazzle the crowds with the singing and piano playing, which eventually got him signed to the legendary Motown Records in the early 1960s. His sound evolved from Motown to soul and funk to disco and R&B. This brother was all over the place. His prominence earned him the nicknames, the Prince of Soul and the Prince of Motown. As his evolution manifested, so did his subject matter. At the height of Motown, that was during the Civil Rights Movement. With these turbulent times of racist American histories coming to a boiling point, it made Marvin reevaluate his whole repertoire. In 1971, he released his classic, timeless song, What's Going On. The legendary tale is that Barry Gordy didn't want Marvin to release the song because he thought it was too political. Marvin said, there was a great deal of unrest in America. I saw the country headed to modern day civil war and it caused me to write music that touches the souls of men. What's Going On became a timeless anthem that brings attention to the ills of society that goes on to this very day. Marvin Gaye is a cornerstone of black music that we will always hold high. So everyone, vibe to the sounds of the legendary, the one and only, Marvin Gaye. Presented by recording artist Lawrence Miles with Cadence Nunn. Enjoy. How sweet it is to be loved by you. Yes, it is.
like a sweet morning dew I took one look at you And it was plain to see You were my destiny With my arms open wide I threw away my pride I'll sacrifice for you Dedicate my life to you I will go where you lead Always there in time of need And when I lose my will Stand by you like a tree Nothing can try to me Darling, in you I found Strength where I was torn down Don't know what's in store But together we can open any door Just to do what's good for you And inspire you a little higher I know you can make a man Out of a soul who didn't have a goal Cause we
Kanye first hit the scene, he was known as a sex symbol. But as he saw what was going on around him with injustices on our people, his music became more socially conscious. Rockets and moonshots Spinning on the handouts Money we make it For we see That right there, wow. I know everybody back at home was up dancing and grooving and saying the words, because he was doing all the Marvin Gaye hits. Some interesting things that you probably didn't know about Marvin Gaye is, number one, he joined the Air Force. So we actually served our country. So salute to Marvin Gaye for that, for real. Along with that, he tried out for the NFL. So this brother, <laughs> he was a singer, but he was an athlete and he was just a warrior spirit. We are happy that he followed his calling, which was singing and reaching us and empowering us with his gift and his blessings and talents. So thank you, Marvin Gaye, for being a king of black music. Please welcome to the stage, Tracy Gibson, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer of Anderson Corporation. Thank you, Niles. 
I am proud and excited to celebrate Black Music Month with an uplifting program that allows us to highlight the contributions that Black people have made to music in America. It's been a turbulent year, but we're so excited to share with all of you, our customers, our employees, and in the communities in which we're located. We're at the historic Capri Theater, the theater where Prince held his very first concert in 1979, and the tickets were only $4. The Capri Theater is not yet open to the public, but we've been granted special access to this unique venue that has deep ties to the black community right here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Anderson Corporation is proud to be a part of this inaugural celebration of black music because music is truly the window to our souls. A phenomenal voice with sultry tones. Lady Day was the name given to Billie Holiday by musician Lester Young. Because of her sassiness on stage and even in real life, although we all know her as one of the most influential jazz singers of all time, she had very humble beginnings in the streets of Philadelphia and Baltimore that created many turbulent situations. But Billie Holiday's life is a testimony, y'all. Instead of becoming a statistic, Billie Holiday turned her pain into passion. As she would listen to Louis Armstrong, she would sing to herself and use his inspiration to cultivate her voice. That turned into a passion that burned so bright as she would appear at different shows in Harlem, New York, singing her heart out in those cotton clubs is where she got discovered and the rest is history. But during those times in the 1930s, racism was prevalent all around America in the most overt ways. Just a decade from the Tulsa massacre and amongst the Jim Crow South, white people were lynching black bodies at a highly alarming rate, you see, we were fresh off slavery and fresh off sharecropping, so that energy was still around the nation and it showed, unfortunately. About these wrongdoings, Billy sprung into action, writing the ever powerful song, the classic, the timeless, Strange Fruit. And no, she didn't stop there. She insisted on performing this anthem that combated hatred and spoke out against the lynchings in front of white audiences, no matter what. She got threatened, she still did it. The boldness of this record created a ripple effect of backlash. As some applauded, others were against it, to the point of having her arrested. But she continued to sing it beyond those times for 20 more years until her dying day. Like I told you before, Billie Holiday is a testimony. You can learn from her life. Strange fruit resonates even now with the conditions of our society. That just shows the infinite power of Billie's artistry that will never die. She won five Grammy Awards and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the year 2000. Two classic movies were made about Billie Holiday starring Diana Ross and recently Andre Day. Billie Holiday's legacy as a true queen of black music will live on forever and ever and ever. Thomasina Petrus is an amazing Twin Cities R&B soul singer and playwright. Every time she performs, the hair stands up on my neck. She is incredible, y'all. If you didn't get a chance to see Thomasina's theatrical performance of Billie Holiday and her one-woman show, Lady Day, then you all are in for a serious treat. So sit back, relax, and take in the gift, the talent of Thomasina Petrus. Why is she still here? All that happened a long time ago. Move on and slowly forget that she is umbilical to every desire for love and life in this world. 
So desire her desire, not her demise. Why is she still here? <laughs> Memories as embers of the fight, the struggle, the love for her people, even more than music. And she was music. She sings us. Sometimes she is us. Welcome night. Be warmed by her double entendre and look for her gardenia in the moonlight. still here. All that happened a long time ago. Move on now and slowly forget that she is umbilical to every desire for love and life in this world. She is our strength. No. 
magnolias sweet and fresh and then the sudden smell of burning flesh here is a fruit for the crows to pluck for the rain to gather for the wind slowly forget never forget she is the umbilical to every desire for love and life in this world desire her desire not her demise why is she still here <laughs> once that sweet gardenia exchanging fragrant note for fragrant notes that sat on her sacred temple a life's tempo quickening as her inner rhythms suspended, soft, frail, withered, ward, warriored, tired. Memories as embers of flight, the struggle and the love for her people, even more than music. And she was music. She sings us. Sometimes she is us. <laughs> All that happened a long time ago? Oh no. Move on slowly 
and forget? <laughs> Not yet.
still here? Why is she still here? Her lullabies still lurking in hotel lobbies and resuscitated speakeasies and ideas on jazz, all trying to begin again a bygone era. Why? All that happened a long time ago. Move on now and slowly forget. Not yet. Afro blue, yes, you and you and Billie Holiday was here right now, I think she would walk up to Thomasina and shake her hand and tell her, thank you for keeping my legacy alive. Did y'all see that? Did y'all feel that? I know you had to. Thank you again, Thomasina Petrus. Absolutely incredible. An interesting fact about Billie Holiday is, she actually wanted to be a dancer instead of a singer. The first gig that she ever went to, she arrived as a dancer, but people heard her singing outside and told her that she was great. So she went on stage, tried it out, and look at us now. Billie Holiday ended up becoming one of the great icons of jazz music, black music. Please welcome to the stage Thomas Jefferson, Vice President of Human Resources for Renewal by Anderson. Having recently joined the Anderson team, I'm excited about our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion and I'm honored to be able to participate in the first annual celebration of black music with all of you. And boy, it has been a treat. I'm looking forward to next year when we can be all together in the same space. She began her career as a child singing gospel at New Bethel Baptist Church in Motown, Detroit, Michigan, where her father, the Reverend C.L. Franklin, was a minister and civil rights activist that organized the 1963 Detroit Walk of Freedom, which was the biggest march before Dr. King's March on Washington. As a young teen, Franklin performed with her father on his gospel programs in major cities throughout the country and was recognized as a vocal prodigy just as a teen. That is amazing. While on tour, she befriended gospel greats such as Mahalia Jackson, Sam Cooke, and Clara Ward. She even sang with Dr. Martin Luther King himself during those times. At age 18, with her father's blessing, Franklin switched from gospel music to secular music. When she moved to New York City, she signed with Columbia Records, the same label that Billie Holiday signed to just years before, carrying on tradition. Without targeting any particular genre, she sang everything from Broadway ballads to youth-oriented rhythm and blues. Critics recognized her talent, but the public remained lukewarm until 1966, when she switched to Atlantic Records. At Atlantic, Franklin returned to her gospel blues roots, and the results were sensational, as she had a successful run for over 25 years. When she released her classic single, Respect, in 1967, it became an anthem for civil rights and feminism. So it was uplifting us, and it was uplifting women. She was a big contributor to the civil rights movement as she put on fundraisers, went on tour, gave free shows, and bailed out activists in support of the movement. So Aretha Franklin wasn't just a singer. She was really, really about that life when it came down to uplifting our people. And the fight was never over. Her career spanned five decades, from the early days of the civil rights movement through the two terms of the first black president, Barack Obama. That is full circle. And I believe that her faith got her there. Her believing that she could got her to the White House in front of the first black president singing. In 1987, she became the first female artist, not just the first black artist, the first female artist 
to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And in 2008, she won her 18th Grammy Award, making her one of the most honored artists in Grammy history. For 40 years, she held the record for the most songs on the Billboard Hot 100. And to this day, Miss Aretha Franklin's legacy is revered around the world. Thank you, Aretha Franklin, for inspiring us. We appreciate you, we love you, we thank you for your contributions, and I'm honored to even be up here to even introduce your legacy. So people, get up and groove to the classic sounds of Aretha Franklin by Grammy Award winning recording artist, Jamesia Bennett. Oh, y'all in for a show with this one. So tired before. 
been waiting for this part of the show, y'all. I was born in Motown, Detroit, Michigan, and I can remember as a little girl hearing young, gifted, and black, and remembering how powerful it made me feel. Many of you don't know, but I'm a pastor, and some have said that Aretha left the gospel church in order to sing secular music, but Aretha took a pause to go back to her gospel roots. Her daddy would say that she never left the church, and I agree with him, because once the church is a part of your foundation, it never leaves you because you are the church. One of Aretha's biggest selling albums of all times was Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace 
get away, let's go someplace far where I don't care. He's the kind of guy that you give your everything and trust your heart, share all of your love till death do us part.
Alicia Bennett and the Hearst Family Experience. Everybody, wherever y'all are at right now, just stand to your feet and clap because that right there was for the ages. That's the reason why we do this, to pay homage and tribute to people like Aretha. And Jamicia, if Aretha was sitting in this Capri Theater right in the center watching you, I truly feel that she would stand up, clap, and give you a hug because that was, that was incredible, for real. This night would not be possible without our sponsor. So please welcome to the stage, Chris Galvin, the president of Anderson Corporation. Wow, this has just been amazing. And I wanna thank all of you who have taken this past hour to spend time learning more about why it's so important that we celebrate black artists and the impact that black music has had on our cultural heritage. And I also want to thank everyone who's made this program possible. You know, music is the window into our souls. It heals our wounds and it bridges our divides. And black music has the power to unite us. It opens our souls and connects us in a way that can bring us all together. We are honored to be sponsors of this inaugural Black Music Month celebration and we look forward to seeing you here again next year. I agree with you, Chris. This has been an amazing program. A tribute to our legends, Marvin Gaye, Billie Holiday, and Aretha Franklin. Thank you, Anderson Corporation. Thank you to the historic Capri Theater. Thank you all so much for being with us, and we will see you live next year. <laughs>